I was told by the Russians alone in 2014, now oh, this is the West, this is why the West is going to take back Crimea. The West, United States of America, NATO is going to take back Crimea with a force for Ukraine. That's why you're going to get this. You're going to get the fucking Crimea. You're going to get one for me. You're going to give one back to Ukraine. Because of this case, you will go, and I don't care what you're going to do, but you're going to get Crimea, and you're going to give one back to Ukrainian people. 100% you're going to give one back, or you're going to burn in hell. This is how. In 2014, Ruskis told me, when I was hijacked, I was taken to psychiatric hospital, Ljubljana Polje, tortured in there, severely tortured. And when invasion on Ukraine started, Russians got me in their hands, literally through American administration, literally through NATO, and got me literally through Germans and got me on Crimea literally got me on Crimea and they played the money game again the MK Ultra, the money game on occasion Vladimir Putin handed me Vladimir Putin, Russians it, it, it went straight parallel with the NATO parallel with Americans parallel to the Germans straight through the Russian hands I was placed into the hands of Ukrainian fraction resistance it was not a fraction it was very strong resistant movement however this resistant movement was completely completely unarmed they did not have a fucking thing they did not have anything they had some the guy in in this main city of Ukraine of of uh, Crimea had they had like an old weaponry like I, that shit was not even from the Soviet Union it, it appeared to me like almost like from the World War II garbage nothing to defend Crimea from Russian invasion you're talking about the Russian invasion Russian invasion started in 2014 what you have seen have taken place on Crimea, that is not annexing Crimea. That plain clearly was invasion on Crimea. Invasion on Ukraine goes on since 2014. Why would they do this stuff? Now let me demonstrate to you. You see, this is the video about a group of so, four live positions, four very different perspectives on this crisis tonight. And we begin here in Moscow. The use of force, President Putin declared, is a last resort. But the first shots in Moscow's occupation of Crimea have already been fired, as Russian troops confronted 200 members of the Ukrainian Air Force over control of a military base. And the war of words across the Atlantic is heating up. More on that soon. The Russians cocked their rifles at the unarmed Ukrainians, firing warning shots into the air as our international editor, Lindsay Hilson, witnessed events unfold. She's in the Crimean capital now. Lindsay. They marched up the hill singing their regimental song. Commander Yuli Mamchur at the head of the column. These are the Ukrainian soldiers of Belbek Air Force Base, and they were demanding their planes back. Hoppa, that's when I'm going to stop. I want you to pay attention to photographer. Along these people, and I have no idea, uh, how exactly that happened. I had a feeling I did not have a silicon mask over my face. However, along these people, yes, I was diagnosed by the Serbian psychiatrists 
Slovenian Udba psychiatrists as a paranoid schizophrenic, so the stuff like this could happen. Right next to these people, with them, the one marching next to them were photographers, it was Americans with whom I was, there was um, at least two Americans that were present, and I was present marching on behalf with these people for Ukraine, for Crimea. I did so, proudly so, uh, in the face of this Russian soldiers here. As they neared the Russian troops, they broke into the Ukrainian national anthem. Even when the Russians fired warning shots in the air, the first shots of this crisis, they didn't stop marching. What they here? They just kept going, nearer and nearer, the Russians. There is quite a few international people here, just for you to be aware. This is where things get complicated. This is where things get complicated. I, right here in the picture, I was about probably, would you see the front guy? I was somewhere like one, two, three, four, fifth row, moving with other crowd here, basically with the soldiers. Dropped up under MKL trial was. Commander Mamchur approached the Russians. It was an extraordinary confrontation between men who were friends last week and foes today. There was one aggressive guy that you see right there pointing with a rifle, this and that. Uh, Russians anticipated arrival, our arrival. Russians anticipated our arrival. Vladimir Putin, in agreement with the West, agreed on this protest by the Ukrainian military to be held, completely disarmed the Ukrainian military to be held in the face of the Russian invaders on Ukraine with idea to disarm them psychologically because the main goal, uh, the primary goal, the paramount idea of this protest totally in quests in line through Western ideology, that's basically when you keep protesting and talking and talking and talking, and the only thing that happens in return is shit in your face. You do the talk, they take over your countries. That's basically how the Western democracy works. And in this case here, you can see the Western democracy straight in actions through the Russian gun barrels pointed at Ukrainians and also, of course, into myself as I always did, and I always will stand up firmly for people of Ukraine. In this case here, in an individual, you're going to see, looks like very white guy, this guy, this, this guy that's, that's holding his hand, finger is pointing at Ukrainian commander. What you see here is being observed through the cameras remotely, uh, right through the eyes of Moscow, it's where you have Angela Merkel, you have American politicians, you have Italian politicians, you have the whole European community observing this shit. And this was basically official takedown of Crimea, of Ukraine. They tried to silence him, but there is Ukrainian that will not be silenced. The Russians had humiliated the Ukrainian forces, and the Ukrainians weren't going to stand for it. 
the Russians aimed their weapons. The officers talked. The Ukrainians didn't flinch. Eventually, the tension lessened. wasn't over. This man, this very white Russian man, this guy. This is a police officer. From what I can recall, this was a police An hour officer. Later, this guy was Russian involved in MKO. He still looking down their sights. He knew the negotiations. The he knew about this stuff. He was well prepared. This was a waiting. well coordinated action. Their MiG-29 fighter jets were still beyond the barbed wire under Russian control. They for raised this, the Ukrainian flag on their barracks. For a this Russian operation, soldier standing guard in front. The Ukrainian soldiers are very relaxed for such a dangerous situation. It's as if they can't really believe that their oh, Russian brothers are training their weapons on them. She speaks but they English are. really well. I just saw this at video that just moment, partially Commander yesterday. Commander Mamchur walked past up to the Russians to negotiate shared... And because I have proven beyond any doubt about my MK Ultra case, I don't give a fuck. I will tell you now in the face of Serbian, Russian, Slovenian Udba diagnosis of my paranoid schizophrenia because I have so many proofs I'm gonna tell you that this here was international this was a Western foremost setup against Ukraine custody of the aircraft he had given them a deadline midday you see they're doing the talk right now. At this point in time, I don't know whether it was at this point in time, I think it was at this point in time, Russians somehow, they mingle with the crowd, they get more people, they bring me to the front. They bring me to the front of this line, they start talk, and I don't know how. Uh, it's the crowd, it mingles, and they make me disappear from the picture. I simply disappear from the picture. Uh, there was somebody 100% that had a silicon mask of mine that the people had a silicon mask that masks that look like myself. They have a replicas of me. It wasn't only that I was given a silicon mask over the face so the people the public would not identify me or I could not be identified but at this point in time it was someone from the Russians that somehow they're going to mingle somehow with this journalist it's going to be journalists around me and I simply disappeared in a second I disappeared I found myself in a barrack in a Russian barrack, on a Russian Midday side, I disappeared. There is somebody else that, whatever they have used, has this mask over the face, and he is there. The atmosphere was relaxed. The Russians are our brothers, the Ukrainians told me. But this morning, they shot in the air and then yes, they threatened they to shoot in your but legs. I think that before, the last shoot, uh, sh sh shots here was during the World War Two. But now you heard and you see the, the yeah, shots there here. you go. There is a crowd. It's blah, 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 blah. At this point in time, I'm no longer here. At this point in time, I am already inside of the Russian barrack. Now, they did orchestrated stuff that... events from Bosnia that already were far over the incidents they rehearsed they repeated and they video recorded this stuff this was not one of them for this one here I actually deem that this was the real real 
situation and I know so because of other videos about Crimea that they during assault on Crimea as Putin stated I need you now why and I had no fucking idea what's gonna happen what exactly went on at all there were three types of drugs one drug left you completely frozen brain dead that was the drug that Donald Trump demanded to be used on me uh, at the beginning it uh, fucking hurt that drug uh, but with the time over the course of the time you got used to it but still this was shitty stuff it would completely freeze brain uh, you would be just freezing yourself all the time unless somebody was mentally engaging with you second uh, drug was much lighter drug was the drug that actually you could somewhat uh, operate uh, mentally you were aware and then there was that third drug that was the ultra light mk ultra drug that was used by the british to cause like ultimate traumas like they would create like uh, scenarios like terrible scenarios how everything goes fucking wrong uh, and presented you with the idea that you are okay, that you are fine, that there is this time, however, you're not drugged up, and uh, it always would start with, we're going to help you, we decided to do this and that, and then the only thing that would happen, you would just be completely without control scenario, and it would lead into real fucking traumas. Uh, for that matter, they would they would they would use something that that would always have a terrible outcome that later was triggered. The memories were triggered to the mainstream media. One of the occasions was the issue with Madeleine McCain, with a British child abducted, hijacked child. Then it was another one in Britain that involved a truck accident and it was always blamed on me that kind of stuff that was an ultra light drug in this case it was a hard drug um that worst drug all of a sudden at this point in time i find myself inside of the barracks inside of the barracks i am brainwashed on what are you doing with this crowd? What are you doing? We're going to kill you for this. This is a treason. You're going to be killed for that and this and that. Uh, first of all, what's going through my mind, because I understood pretty much what went on, because Ukrainian soldiers explained to me what, more or less, what went on. The next thing you see, the, the people inside of the barrack, these Russians, they, they're all like blue-eyed, and uh, this guy also comes up front inside of the barrack. Why are you doing this to me? Because these are the people that were involved in MK Ultra. Uh, I thought that we are friends and this and that, blah, 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 blah. Why are you doing this to me? So I figured out, I said to myself, fuck, how, what kind of a protest is this shit when I'm life-threatened here inside of the barrack? life threatened inside of the barrack and uh what's going on here so i i figure out these people are going to kill me here there is nothing i can do and the crowd is chanting out there and there is somebody that is just my replica right there next to this international journalists next to this international journalists with Ukrainian people, not too far, that don't fucking know anything, that I'm inside of the barrack, don't know anything about what goes on. So I go along with the program, and that's basically what Vladimir Putin, I have no fucking idea, maybe just a day, maybe 12 hours later, the next day, Vladimir Putin comes to this very location with a Western delegation, and he is very, very, very pleased about this. I told you, even commands the guy, the guy that I pointed you out, that is like light fixtures, skin, 
uh, on well done job and this and that. That's why we selected you because we know that you're like light skinned people. That's why we selected him. Ha ha. And this and that. And this is basically why you screw up Crimea. It started with the Prince Charles from Buckingham Palace. It started in 95, in 96, in 97, when meetings between Western delegations and Eastern European delegations oftentimes would also lead to Crimea. Ukrainian Crimea, beautiful place. That's what they were looking. That's what they were requesting. The elites wanted something over something beautiful. And to impress them, just like case was in Poland and in other locations, Slovenia and so on, they would bring them also to Crimea. And Crimea became very popular, very, very of a high interest to Charles, to Buckingham Palace. They liked the, the <coughs> landscape because Charles and Andrew loved hiking. And so it was Crimea at large. And Ukrainian people would say, because they felt threatened they felt under the threat because the russians would go around and they would just look oh yeah they started to behave like this is already putin started with with his cronies started to behave like this is already part of the russia this is russia already they would go to ukrainian people intimidate people over there you're in in russia you're russian what are you talking about like this and uh, charles whenever he was confronted by the local people well uh he told them uh oh, no ah, but you know and people asked him what about what about this gonna happen what about this gonna happen and he said and then we're gonna do something this is not gonna happen no this is no 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 everything you know like something like it, it's impossible would happen somehow this is never gonna fucking happen it's impossible that Russia would go and take over your homes, your freedom. It's never going to fucking happen. It's impossible, basically. Like, you would, you would, like, I would go someplace, and I would have that amount of power, and people would become scared because of the meetings I held with these people, that they're going to lose their homes, their country, not only their homes. Uh, and... So I would just discern their concerns, you know, in their face and, and be like, oh, no, that's, that's just, that's a nonsense. Don't worry, don't even worry about that stuff. In that sense, that's how Charles basically dismissed their concerns now. Because you ruined my life. You ruined my American citizenship. You used me against Ukrainian people for the sake of, thrown Ukrainian people out of their own country, out of their own homes. You're going to get that fucking Crimea back to Ukraine. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't care really how the fuck you're going to do it. You're going to do another, I suppose you're going to do another Normandy, something like this. You're going to get Crimea back. It was the same shit in Donetsk. It was the same thing Vladimir Putin did through the West. They brought me to Donetsk and they did the same, the same, the same, completely the same shit. And we want to see what kind of weaponry did Ukrainian did Ukrainians had. Ukrainians are completely unprepared. What happened with this stuff here? What happened with this stuff here was I didn't want to have anything to do with it because I figured out that I can get killed. You see, they mingle here with the Russians also come and they, the, the Russian guards are also going to come here and more and mingle. And it's this international people, this international journalists that squeeze me right back in the crowd. After several hours that went on, they squeeze me back in a crowd and it's this Ukrainian people here. The soldiers don't even know what the fuck goes on. There was one or two people here, from what I can recall, from this Ukrainian soldiers, that Vladimir Putin said, 
that they stated them they're going to be charged, they threatened them, but the rest of it, the point of this blah, 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 blah here, and that's how Western democracy works, basically. They completely demoralized, terrorized them. This crowd have basically demoralized, fallen apart. Today, these soldiers are conscripted, backed into Vladimir Putin is military, and whether they like it or not, they have to fight on the front lines against their own people in Ukraine. That's why I'm telling you, I don't know how, but I'm American citizenship, I, a citizen. I got one in two, year 2000. You had no right to use me against Ukrainian people for the sake of Vladimir Putin, whose actions are completely indifferent from Adolf Hitler. Joseph Stalin. These are the actions clearly used for the sake of Russian Lebanon, for ethnic cleansing, for the genocide of Tatars, of Ukrainians, of Ukrainian Tatars, Ukrainians throughout Crimea, throughout Donetsk, and as you see now, through the rest of the Ukraine. You have no right Besides Slovenian citizenship, I also hold American citizenship. I'm not going to give anyone away for the sake of Vladimir Putin, as you requested me to do so, and I will not comply with this kind of ideology. You're going to get Crimea, and you're going to get Donetsk back. I don't know how the fuck you're going to get this, but you're going to bring, you're going to give homes to Ukrainian people. You're going to bring the families back in their homes. You're going to get this because you're the one, you cook this together with the Vladimir Putin for the sake of Vladimir Putin. I don't know how you're going to get this done, but you're going to get this fucking done one way or the other. I don't care how Vladimir Putin killed Ukrainian people. That's why I say I don't give a fuck how, how you're going to do it, but you're going to do it. He murdered, he slaughtered Ukrainian people. He kills Ukrainian people right now he brought one million of Russians on a, on Crimea since 2014 and means that not only for every home that is lost Ukrainian home that is lost in Crimea and in Donetsk that is Russian family that moves in he brought additional one million people, Russians from Russia, and it could be also from other countries even, from other regions, because he does the stuff like this. So it's more of the international concept, and these are just the people that are completely in his hands. So I don't know, that's 50% increase of the population of Crimea, that's really ethnic cleansing as hard as it gets, so that's why I say you didn't have the right to do this. I'm American citizen. I'm European Union citizen. I don't know how the fuck you're going to do this. But you're going to get Crimea back in the hands of Ukrainian people. Either way. Whichever way the fuck you know, you're going to get Donetsk and Crimea and hand one back to Ukrainian people. The fault for the fall of Ukrainian Donetsk, Crimea, and what you see right now, lies right on your hands. Your hands are bleed. They're covered with the blood, Great Britain. You did this shit. Washington, D.C., Berlin. You played Rome, Italy, Paris. You played. It was Italians. It was French that participated in this bullshit against Ukrainian people in Crimea. You did this stuff through the money game. And the money game now orders you to get this back. You said that Putin is angry. I read the news today on, on the internet. I'm fucking mad. You're going to get this. I don't know how the fuck you're going to get this. I thought that there's something. I saw there is something about uh, MiG-29. About MiG-29 planes that Ukraine would like to get. Yeah, these are these old rusty Soviet planes. Uh, planes that... That's all 
that's all that's left from this poor Soviet legacy to Ukrainian pilots, and that's what they know the most, this, this MiG-29 planes. You're going to get whatever the fuck you have, F-35, whatever fuck you have in your arsenal, and you're going to get them and back, you're going to get this fucking Crimea and Donetsk back to Ukraine, to Ukrainian people. You're going to bring this two million families that are scattered all over Europe, these people from Ukraine, these refugees, you're going to give them right, you're going to bring them right back inside of their homes where they're going to settle for good, where nobody's going to touch them again. This is your fault. You did this through this money game, and the money game orders you in the face of angry Vladimir Putin, get Ukrainians their country back. Thanks for watching this video. Today is, and I'm really pissed off, Today is March 9, 2022. This is why I was diagnosed with a paranoid schizophrenia, so the shit like this could happen to a nation as great as Ukrainian. That's the second biggest European state with a 45 million people. Thanks for watching this video. Till next time.